Does your printer have a clog that you just can't seem to fix? Are you having weird spongy prints or something that looks like this? I'm going to tell you how to fix it. My name is Zach and welcome. I'm going to try to breeze through this so stick with me. This particular fix was done on a Creality CR6 SE. The screens and menus might be different from your printer as well as some of the parts. However, this procedure will work for almost all Bowden tube type printers as well as be applicable to some direct drive printers. First things first, let's heat up the nozzle. This whole procedure is going to need to be done with a heated hot end, so please be careful not to burn yourself or short any electronics that might become exposed. I like to set my hot end to 200 while doing this. I generally heat just the nozzle because I hate touching my arm to a hot build plate or laying tools down on a heated build plate only to pick them up later when they're really hot. After the hot end reaches temp, let's remove the filament. If your clog is so bad that you cannot remove the filament, don't worry, we'll have another opportunity coming up. Here is part of the reason why you have a clog and why the filament is so difficult to remove. That plug is plastic that was sitting in the hot end and you can see it has become wider because of the small amount of heat creep. If this is too bad, you won't be able to pull the filament through the Bowden tube and you will have to remove the filament after we take off the nozzle. Next, let's take off the hot end housing. Yours may look different and your hot end fan might be attached to the housing, but that shouldn't matter too much. After the housing is out of the way, we need to remove the pneumatic fitting for the Bowden tube. You can see I'm having some difficulty getting that Capricorn tubing out of the hot end. And that's why. Look at how nasty that is. This isn't melted PLA that has worked its way back up. This is a nasty, sticky residue from hundreds of hours of printing. And if the outside of the tube looks like this, the inside isn't much better. So let's clean it up. First, take the nozzle out. Let's have a fresh nozzle ready to go. They're cheap and it's much easier to just replace it than to try to clean it out. After the nozzle is out, we need to clean the inside of the heat break and get all that sticky crap out. For this, we'll use some cotton swabs with one end wet with isopropyl alcohol. Stick the wet end first and pull the whole swab through the hot end. Repeat until it's adequately clean. Next, we need to chop off the part of the Bowden tube that is covered in this sticky goo. If your tube won't be long enough after chopping this off, then you'll need to replace the tube. Here you can see I already chopped it off, but I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. Just make sure your cut is perpendicular to the tube. Next, we put the new nozzle in and tighten it. Thank you. 
With the pneumatic fitting pulled back far enough along the Bowden tube, stick the tube into the heat brake until it stops. When it stops, it's hitting the back of the nozzle and that's what you want. Then slide the pneumatic fitting up to the heat brake and thread it in, then tighten it. At this point, we're done with the hot end and we can put the shroud back on. Now, let's move around to the extruder. This is the part that's overlooked a lot. It's the spur gear on your extruder. The soft brass can wear out rather quickly and it will no longer grip the filament. You can see how the teeth have worn down, so we're going to change it. I prefer to change these out with steel spur gears so they don't wear out as fast. Make sure to get the set screws tensioned against the flat part of the motor shaft. The teeth of the new gear need to align with the idler. If the new gear is too high or too low, the teeth won't be in the filament path and it won't be able to push your filament. Okay, so next let's test it. We'll extrude a small amount and make sure everything looks good. Everything looks good to me. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video and you want to see other 3D printer maintenance videos or things like it, let me know in the comments. Thanks!